Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, if, if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I am obviously not the lead pastor here. Uh, my name is Josh Lucas, and I'm the youth director here at a First Reformed Church, which means that I take care of the young kids. Uh, so I might be a little crazy, I might be a little wacky, and uh, you're going to be hearing some amazing things this morning. So you came on a very special uh, Sunday uh, here this morning, and we're just so happy that you're here. Um, but uh, the Bible tells us that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. So why don't we go ahead and all stand together, and let's worship our Lord and Savior together with our first couple of hymns. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for this beautiful morning. Father, we just ask, Lord God, that you will open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, to you. That you will open up our hearts and our minds to your word on this day. And that uh, you will just be with each and every one of us, God. And uh, may you be honored and glorified. We just thank you so much for being in this place, Father. We can feel your spirit just flowing around us, God. And uh, may you just receive all glory, honor, and praise in this time. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So why don't we go ahead and take this opportunity to greet each other uh, in God's love. And if you were on the mission trip with the high school kids, can you guys come up front for a minute, please? Thank you. Like I said, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Lucas, and uh, I just really want to encourage all of you uh, to, um, to please, if this is your first time here, uh, to fill out uh, that little card that's in the pocket in front of you. That is our visitor's card. Uh, we just want to get to know you. We want to know that you're here, and we want to know how we can pray for you. Um, so if you have any type of prayer requests or anything at all, um, or even just a, a prayer or praise or something like that, there's a green card that's in the pocket in front of you. You can fill that out, and you can drop those in the offering basket, and then someone from our office uh, will be getting in contact with you about more information about our church, but also just uh, in ways that we can pray for you. And she is not aware that I'm going to do this, and I hope this doesn't embarrass her too much, but I would like to personally like to welcome back our awesome secretary, Jamie, who was gone for two weeks, and she did an amazing job. Even though she was not in the office, she still made sure the bulletins were done, the order of worships were done, everything was done according to plan. So welcome back, Jamie, and your family. So if we could please give them a round of applause. So... Yes. Uh, so a couple of announcements for you guys uh, that's going, in our, going on in our church. Uh, First Reformed Church is scheduled to help serve at the banquet in Sioux Falls on Tuesday, August 13th. Uh, I, we've done this in the past before, but if you don't know what it is, uh, all the information is in the back uh, on the information center with sign-ups on uh, whether to help uh, with the setup or during the service time. Um, it's just a great way for us to reach out to the uh, homeless community out in Sioux Falls and to preach the gospel to them and give them a, a really warm meal uh, to, to help uh, feed them. So if you want to take advantage of that, please go to the back and sign up. It's, it's a great opportunity. Next is the education ministry is seeking willing members to fill positions in the fall education program. So teachers are needed for the Sunday school program and Wednesday night education program. And that's going to be beginning in September. So uh, uh, please... Uh, if you would like to sign up for that or be a part of this amazing opportunity to teach our young ones, uh, please um, uh, prayfully consider sharing your time and efforts to lead and teach the, our church's family's youth. And any questions or any sign-up uh, requests, if you want to sign up, uh, can be made to anyone on the education ministry team, uh, which is myself, Laurel Clausen, uh, uh, Dick Oldenkamp, um, uh, Diane Langstrat. Pastor Luke, um, Deb Costers, thank you. I'm trying to remember everybody. But just think, think of those names, and uh, you can get in contact with them, and uh, we'll get you signed up. 
And so that's all the announcements that I have, unless if I forgot something uh, at all. I don't think so. All right. Um, I would like to invite up uh, the high school mission trip uh, because we uh, re just recently uh, went on a mission trip uh, to Rockport, Texas. And uh, we, um, we had an amazing time there uh, just rebuilding uh, homes for the uh, hurricane victims from Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. And so I would like to invite them up for, for a time of sharing just with you as a congregation of what we did. We did have a slideshow, but just like with all the technology, it doesn't work when you want it to. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have uh, the pictures to show you, but uh, we're, we'll, we'll, I'll be working on that to try to get those to you. Uh, let me get a microphone. Oh, there's one right there. All right. Um, did I shut myself off again? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share just an overall general idea of what we did. And then each and every one of these amazing individuals is going to uh, share a personal testimony of, um, of what they experienced. So while we were down in Rockport, uh, we were split up into one, two, three teams. Um, and uh, what we had to do was we had to do very different jobs, uh, whether that be uh, painting uh, a brand new home that had sheetrock laid in it or uh, laying down flooring after um, the, uh, the, ply the plywood or the, the, the wood was laid down on the floor. Um, also, we, we did an, uh, a job which I've never done before, but I, you know, great, great job for them, was we, we were helped rebuilding a house that was on stilts and it wasn't mounted properly, or I don't know. It was Darren uh, that helped with that, so he can share the details on that. But um, it was very hot, it was very humid, but uh, it was an amazing time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over, uh, starting with uh, Mrs. K, and then we're just going to go down the line. So, who, who uh, they started calling during the week, Mama K. Mama K. So Mama K is going to share with you. Um, I was in a group with Faye. Wyatt, Natalie, and Brian, our supervisor, or site, su site supervisor, I guess you call it. And Brian was a very quiet guy, and, he, and that's how he led. He would um, tell us, give us the details, say this is our plan for the day, and then we would dive in. And then he wouldn't say a whole lot, and that really kind of made all the rest of us kind of go, okay, what do we do next? Especially me, because he handed me a power tool and I was like scared to death because I didn't know how to use it. And so I learned how to use the power drill uh, thingy. I don't really know what it's called, but it, it made me feel pretty powerful. <laughs> so that was fun. We worked for a lady. We went about 40 minutes from Rockport um, in a town called Sinton. And her home had been um, damaged primarily on the outside. Um, let's see what else. The, uh, she had a lot of bad stuff happen, happen in her life. Right mm. before the hurricane, she lost her husband. Mm. Then the hurricane hit, and then she was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. So she had a lot going on. She has a daughter who has some uh, disability issues. They needed a ramp built in front of the house, which I assisted Brian in doing the first day. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know I could do something like that. And I could never do it on my own. but. Um, with Brian just telling me where to put the nail, I could do it. So that was really cool. We also met, uh, Diane was the homeowner, we met her daughter, Melinda. And that is the coolest part of the whole trip for me, one of the coolest parts, but probably the coolest part of the whole trip for me because Melinda um, had been living in her home for a couple of, or in her car for a couple of weeks her, uh, Diane, who is her aunt, um, shared that with me. She went, then Diane said, you're going to stay at my house until you get back on your feet. Well, one day when um, we were kind of in between doing little tasks, I had a chance to talk with Melinda. And she shared, she said, you know, my life has just, I've had a lot of bad stuff happen. Um, she said, I really feel like God has left me and he's abandoned me. And I said, oh no, Diane, or Melinda, that doesn't happen. And I said, it says in the Bible, he will never leave us or, or forsake us. 
And she said, really? And I said, really, that's true. And I asked her, I said, do you have a Bible? And she didn't have, she didn't have a Bible. She had a, a what, what did I say? A Jehovah Witness Bible. And I asked her if she had the Bible or had a cell phone with the Bible app. And we got the Bible app hooked up on her phone. And I said, you can, you know, read the Bible. And I said, there's little studies you can do on here. And she picked one out. She said, I think God's promises is a good one for me to start with. And I said, I think so. And that all came after the second day when we had circled up before we, uh, to pray before we left the work site. And she asked to be in the circle. And that next day she said, when we prayed, she was in between Natalie and Faye. She said, I just felt their faith come right through their hands to me. And she said, I've never felt that tingly feeling like that before. And I said to her, that's the way the Holy Spirit works in really mysterious ways. And so Melinda, I don't know what her last name is, but on my phone, it's Melinda Texas. And <clears throat> Melinda Texas said to me, I just had messaged her. Um, she had messaged on Tuesday this past week. Good morning, Laurel. Have a beautiful, blessed day. And I said, thank you, and um, told her, you know, we had some a huge storm and stuff. Then she said, I'm so happy for you. My heart swells with love, knowing my friends are doing awesome. And then I said to her this morning, going to church this morning to share about our work trip. Anything special you would like me to share? And she said, just thank the Lord for bringing you and your family, which I consider all these people up here, into our path. It was a blessing. I attended church yesterday, too, and it was amazing. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, I said. I will definitely share and keep reading your Bible app. And she said, I will. Have a blessed day, Laurel. Say hi to Natalie, Faye, and Wyatt. So hi, Wyatt from Melinda. <laughs> now I'm going to pass the mic. Um, like, I learned a lot on this trip. I, like, I didn't realize I would learn this much, like, we really take our relationship with God for granted, and a lot of the adults, the other volunteers beside ours, were telling us that they didn't get to come into a relationship with God when we were this young. And so, like, hearing that, that we can actually, we have a relationship with God and we're this young is pretty cool. And we put in a window, which was neat, so, yeah. Well, our group was a little different the first couple of days. Well, first of all, before I even get going, you know, when you're going down in a bus or a van packed with everything in the back, it's amazing where you can sleep. And obviously they have pictures if you haven't seen them on Facebook already. But yeah, that was quite interesting on the way down. It was a lot of fun. Um, in my group, I had uh, Logan and, uh, and my son, um, Gannon, that wasn't here today. Um, as far as our group, we had Tim, um, awesome guy. We heard a lot of testimony, just a lot of talk from him about his life, just the different people that we, we worked with. Oh, and um, Thelma, uh, she was a Cuban lady, 75, and every morning she would, uh, it was just a, uh, the woman had so much heart. She lost her husband a couple of years ago of cancer. Um, so she told us a few things, but every morning she would get up and she would do her push-ups. And so you just knew the type of work ethic of the type of woman that she was and the heart that she had. And I guess just through the week and the first couple of days, we, uh, we had a house that would, uh, had a hurricane going through, but they had different tornadoes that would just drop and go. Well, this particular area was the spot that got hit and it kind of leveled everything. So. A lot of what was already there, they used 10 by 10s and they put the house about 10 feet in the air just to keep it from all the flood water, hurricane, or just debris and everything else. Well, a lot of it, when we got up into the house, the house would have that shaky feeling when you were walking in it. So we just kind of went around, we tightened up all the bolts. So we had this uh, uh, Hispanic guy named Joe, Cowboy Joe. Yeah, he was, he was a lot of fun. But uh, him and I got to work together a lot, and Logan and, and Gannon got to know what, uh, how to do angles. But mind you, the six by sixes were not light. I mean, they were 14 feet long, 
and you had to get everything gusseted on the corners, front, back, and the middle to get everything tightened up. So we had, uh, it was quite interesting how it is to work as a team. Even when it is uh, 110, I think it was like three days, it was well over that with humidity and everything else. So um, we got to meet uh, the, the homeowner also was, uh, his name is Jesus and uh, his girlfriend is Lisa. Um, just uh, very warm people too, just brought us icicle or popsicles every day. Uh, made sure that we were doing uh, just, and then, then usually before we started, we always uh, got in a circle and we prayed um, for them um, and for their house. Um, and then usually worked throughout the day. And then, like I said, we'd circle up again, pray for them. Even some of the neighbors came over and um, a couple of different times and thanked us um, for anything that we needed. I think there's a couple of you, I think, that... Uh, went to the gas station and a lady pulled up and paid for their gas and food too or well but just you, you just have people like that that were so appreciative whether you're working on their house or just people in general so and um, being on my first trip there and and be able to have uh, to see that and just the, the uh, how Samaritan's purse is uh, Oh, it's just amazing people. I mean, I, you can't even put words to it until you're, you're there and to you, and to you see them and how um, excited and um, just with the praying and the, and the um, energy that they put into it. So uh, there's so much more. I mean, because even the pictures that we have, we have a bunch. And, <clears throat> but... Yeah, and after we got done doing the supports and everything, we got up, got, uh, went upstairs, and then we just did, redid the flooring. We got all through that, which the two boys got to uh, see when, how to do the flooring and, and just to meet the people that came up and that were just so thankful that we were there driving two days and to go down there and to, to help them out. So, um, yeah, it was a very um, heartfelt, very, to me, it was a very blessing for me to, to go down there and do that. I had a very great time on this trip. Uh, it was just fun to see how God could work through us to help the people in need after they lost almost everything. And it was great to see that, um, like Laurel said, Melinda believing fully instead of thinking that God left her after they lost everything and she lost her job and she had been living in her car. My group put in windows and painted this lady's house and just put sheetrock in her house after the windows were done. And it was great knowing them, and they cooked us food a couple of the days we were there, and that was really fun. Okay, so for the first couple of days, our group was, like, jumping around from houses because we were, like, the helpers. But on the last few days, uh, we had to paint, and our group really wasn't too excited to do that. <laughs> but um, as the days went on, this was the last three days, we just got a lot closer to each other and pa while painting and all that and just knowing that the Lord was with us while doing this was absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really cool is that our owner, he lost everything. His house was fully gone and his wife left him before with a divorce. He had nothing left. He slept in a tent for about three weeks and Samaritan's first came and then he was just so happy just to see us there and help him. And I just couldn't believe how he could still be happy with everything that he lost. And same with Joe. Joe lost all of his house. He was sleeping in his truck, going from hotel to hotel. And he just came back and helped. I just couldn't believe how amazing that was for someone who lost everything to still be happy and still help out around the community. And my group, when we came back from the work site, a trucker stopped us and said thank you. And he was a believer, too, because he said that he inspired us for him to know Jesus even more. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed the trip, too. Uh, it's just amazing what God can do, especially when he puts you in that place to do the right things for people. And uh, one of my favorite things that we did was uh, just talking with the site supervisors about people's stories. And uh, our site supervisor, his name was Steve. And um, it was just crazy about his story because... He got kicked out of the house by his wife, and uh, 
he's only got to see his son and daughter like two times their whole entire life. And then he ended up biking all the way from Sacramento, California to Jacksonville, Florida, just to give his son a birthday present one year. So I thought that was pretty cool too. And uh, I want to encourage anybody out there that was even just thinking about coming on this mission trip that uh, I hope you can try it sometime because it's definitely worth it. Well, Mrs. K has one last thing that she wants to add. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just want to share that, um, like Darren was saying, when you're in a van with um, this many of us, plus a couple more, you get to know each other pretty well. Um, they, they share things that um, are really cool. You get to really know them. The other thing that I noticed was every night we had devotions. Josh led us in devotions. And just what the kids shared um, really made me appreciate where they are in their walk with the Lord and how they're growing. And that was really, really cool. I, I love seeing that. Um, just their faith at this age was really cool. And I have to brag on Josh a little bit because he, just how he puts up with all of us. I don't know, but he did. And um, led us and loved us. And so thanks, Josh, for all that you do. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to say one last thing. Uh, we got like a minute left in our share time. Um, yeah, this was... Um, this was honestly, I mean, besides the birth week of my daughter, um, this was honestly the best week of my life so far. Um, not because like it was uh, with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, but uh, but but because I, I wish we had the pictures um, because it just really the pictures show the work that these that these individuals did. And just seeing how tore down these houses were and how bad they were. And then in just like what, a two day period, a three day period, they turned it into this like masterpiece looking brand new. And it was just, it was just so amazing to see how hard they worked and how very little complaining they did um, about how hot it was. Um, but like like Laurel was saying during devotions, uh, I had no idea how that was going to go. This was something that we just tried to do uh, this this just this year, just seeing how it would go. I don't know if it was going to be something that would actually pertain to the kids, pertain to the work that we were doing, but I'm not kidding you. I think they can attest to this. Every single night, I, I prepared this a week in advance, but every single night we did devotions. The, the, the scripture that we read, the discussion that we had, all revolved around the work that was going on on that day and what we were going through that specific day. It was, it was just crazy um, how the Holy Spirit did that. And I think it really, at least for me, it helped get through that agonizing week of just, uh, just sweating. You guys know me. I don't like to sweat. I like sitting in my air conditioning office, you know? <laughs> like, and... I didn't have to use a shop vac this year either, so that was pretty nice. Um, but I'm sorry, I'm just... Uh, it was just such an amazing, amazing week. And I really just want to encourage each and every one of you, if you have not gone on a mission trip like this before in your life, when the opportunity arises, please do it. Satan was trying to get some of these kids to not go. Satan was trying to even get me to not go by using my daughter. Um, and we, we fought through it. We prayed hard. So just, I'm, I'm not trying to guilt anybody into this, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it is life-changing, and it'll strengthen your faith so, so much if you go on this trip and you see the amazing changes that happen to these homes and also just seeing the amazing things that, that, that you can do with the strength of the Lord. So I just want to pray uh, for the team um, so uh, if you'll please just join me in praying for this team. I just really want to pray them up um, and thank them for thank the Lord for them uh, for sending them. So let's go to our Lord in prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this amazing team, God. I am just so beyond blessed to have worked and to have led and to serve with an amazing group of individuals, Father. Um, we came into this, this, this mission trip not really knowing each other, not knowing what was going to happen, but I really feel that we, we left this, uh, this mission trip stronger than ever, stronger in our faith, stronger in our relationships with each other. And uh, Father, we just thank you for giving us the strength to carry on even though it was so, so hard to carry on and to wake up so early in the morning and to work all day and then to uh, go to bed a little late and just trying to do all this and balance all the work and stuff, it was just so, so hard to do. But Father, you, you give us the strength to carry on. And so we thank you, Father. And I just pray, Lord God, that, that, uh, that you will continue to work in each and every one of these individuals uh, standing up here, and those who even were not able to attend uh, this morning, Father. I just pray, Lord God, that you would just uh, strengthen them and be with them, Father, that you will continue to do a work in them so that they can go out and to share what they experienced and share how they spread the gospel. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would be with uh, um be with the college um, kids who are actually going to the same exact place that, that we were serving in. Uh, may you bless them, Father, in the same way that you blessed uh, us. Father, may they, may they be uh, strengthened by you. May, they, may, may their faith be grown um, by you, Father. And uh, we just love you so much, God, and we thank you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, All right, <clears throat> so the last thing uh, that we have here is we just have some prayer concerns uh, from members of our congregation and, um, and also just uh, members in our community. Um, so please continue to lift up uh, Dave uh, uh, Klein-Walterink, uh, Michael Block Jr., Cavell Van Weston, and Mike Kreienbrink. Uh, may you remember them in your prayers uh, as they continue to deal with uh, health issues um, just pray for strength and healing for them and to, to carry on through this uh, very trying time for them. And then we have some campers that are going to camp this week. Elijah Seiler, Levi Seiler, Kendra DeBoer, Gracie Odens, uh, Addison DeZeo, and Jocelyn DeZeo. So please keep them up in your prayers this week. Um, and then also the college uh, young adult uh, mission trip participants. Uh, they're traveling there now. Um, they actually, uh, I saw the schedule, and they're actually, they should be attending uh, worship right now at this time. Um, so please just keep them, uh, keep them um, up in your prayers. And then also this week, uh, the middle school are, is going to Power Connection this weekend, uh, July 26th uh, through the 28th. So please uh, keep the, uh, the middle schoolers in your prayers, but also keep um, the chaperones in your prayers as well, um, as we are taking 24 junior high students in a van well in vans um, down to Minneapolis uh, to give to do a retreat with them uh, and also please continue to lift up Kay Jansen's brothers up in your prayers uh, Kay's brother Richard had a stroke three weeks ago and is in the Veterans Hospital in Sioux Falls her brother Bob had a stroke this past week and is in the Avera Hospital in Sioux Falls so please pray for healing for Bob and for Richard um, and then um, just remember Merlin Durenboss, uh, 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 Merlin's having surgery um, uh, this, th uh, tomorrow, um, so please just uh, keep Merlin uh, in your prayers, and our, uh, <coughs> these are always hard to, to announce, but our sympathies are extended to Marcus DeBoer and his family upon the death of Marcus's nephew, Ned DeBoer, on Monday, July 15th, so just please continue to keep the DeBoer family uh, in your prayers as uh, they continue to uh, deal with this loss. And uh, just may the, the Holy Spirit just um, uh, shine, shine its light upon them and uh, love on them. And also please uh, show love to Marcus and his family as well. I mean, we should be doing that each and every day, but this is a special time. So uh, let's, uh, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you so very much for this beautiful morning that you have made. Father, yesterday we had some pretty scary weather. Uh, the wind was blowing, trees were, were, branches were breaking off of trees, and, and just all kinds of debris was, 
was uh, blowing everywhere, and it was just a scary, scary time. But Father, it was so amazing to see uh, during that storm. It was very scary to watch, but then the sun came out, and then and it was just calm throughout the rest of the day, Father. And that's what you do. You calm the storms. You have the power to to uh, command the storms to stop. You command. The, the, the waves to cease. You have the power of control over everything that is in our world. And we just thank You so much for keeping us safe, Father, and um, just providing for us, God. And uh, we just pray, Lord God, that we just want to lift up everyone in our congregation that is uh, dealing with some type of sickness or illness, Father, whether that be cancer or some type of uh, illness with surgery or anything like that, Father. We just ask, Lord God, that you would be with them and that you would guide the doctors uh, that are caring for them, that they provide for them uh, the right medications and the treatments that they need to, to be better and uh, to just be strengthened in you, Father. And uh, we just want to uh, continue to lift up uh, the, college, the college students as they are heading down to Rockport, Texas uh, to do mission work as we just shared. Father, uh, we just ask, Lord God, that you would just be with them, protect them. And uh, as I said, Lord God, just make sure, Father, if it is a part of your will, that, uh, that they not only have fun, but that they work hard and that, uh, that they remember um, that it's all for you, not for gain, personal gain, but for your glory and your kingdom. Uh, and Father, we just also want to lift up the middle schoolers as they head to Power Connection this weekend, Father. May you just uh, protect them as well as, as we travel uh, to Minneapolis. There's a lot of construction that's going on uh, down there. And just ask the Lord God that you would provide traveling mercies for us uh, so that we can get there safely and in a timely manner. And... Uh, also, just be with the chaperones, Father, that are going to attend. Uh, help them to just guide the middle schoolers um, to, to either come into a relationship with you or to have their, their, their faith strengthened in you, Father. And we just want to lift up uh, Bob and Richard uh, to you, Father, as they are uh, dealing with health issues, um, uh, with strokes. Father, we just ask, Lord God, that you would just be with them, that you would heal them. And also just be with uh, Kay as uh, she is... Uh, dealing with, with uh, uh, helping uh, her brothers out, Father. May you just provide strength for the family. And uh, Father, we want to also lift up Merlin uh, as he is uh, going, to do, uh, going in for surgery tomorrow. May you just be with the doctors. And uh, may he have a, a smooth uh, and easy surgery. And Father, we also just want to pray, Lord God, for Marcus DeBoer and for his family. Uh, may you just help them through this difficult time, Father, it's, just, it's so hard to deal with loss because we want to keep all of our loved ones here. We want to be able to see them each and every day. But Father, help us to remember that if they do believe and they do repent of their sins and they trust in You, that they will experience eternal life. That, that when we pass on from this world, we are in eternity forever with no pain, no suffering, no sadness, no anger, just pure perfection and paradise forever. So help us to remember that, Father. Help us to be encouraging to Marcus and to his family. And may you just be with each and every one of the members of his family. Just keep them, keep them safe and let them know that they are loved. May you open up our hearts, Lord, to this uh, message on this day. Uh, may you be with me as, uh, as I uh, bring the word, Father. Just ask, Lord God, that you would push me out of the way, that it would be your words, not mine. And uh, may you just uh, open up our hearts and our minds to you. We love you and we thank you, Father. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So if you'll please stand with me and we'll continue in our worship with our uh, last hymn before the message. Le lead on, O King Eternal. All right. So today we are going to be uh, talking about a very important topic today, and we're going to be hopefully challenged by this message today. We're hopefully going to be changed by this message, and uh, we are hopefully uh, going to be strengthened uh, by this message today. And uh, I just hope and pray that each and every one of you uh, are blessed by this, uh, by this message. So, I have a question that I would like to ask uh, each of you, and I just want to 
I just want you to think about this because it might sound silly uh, when, you, when I ask this, but uh, my question is, what do you see when you look in the mirror? You know, what, what is it that you look at when you look at the mirror, in the mirror, the first, maybe first time that you wake up? Maybe do you look at your hair? Do you look at your, your eyes for your eye boogers? Do you look at the acne that might be on your face? You know, what is it that you see in the mirror each and every morning? Are you a hearer or are you a doer? These two questions, uh, hopefully, that's my goal, is going to be answered today. So the passage that we're going to be reading out of today is out of James chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 22. So if you'll please turn with me in your Bibles, uh, in the pocket in front of you, if you don't have a Bible, uh, it is on page 1881, but please turn with your Bibles with me, if you will please, to James 1, uh, starting in verse 22. Um, this is, quite honestly, probably uh, the most important text in the Bible about the Christian life. Um, this is just my opinion, of course. I mean, you can't get more important than Jesus. Um, but it's just so great because uh, I truly believe that James uh, sums it all up. Everything that Jesus preached, everything that the apostles preached is all summed up right here in these three verses. And you're probably thinking, Josh, you're insane. How can you sum up four Gospels and like every, every single uh, book in the Bible with just three verses. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Um, so let's just read right here. Uh, starting in verse 22. Here are the words of the true and living God, church. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the Word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. In light of God's living Word, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Father in Heaven, uh, we just ask, Lord God, again, that You will be with us that you will open up our hearts and our minds to this word. May this word change us and sanctify us, Lord. May you be with me. May your word speak through me, God. And may we just remember what the goal is, and that is to be a mirror of you. We love you and we thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, who here loves to talk? I love to talk. As you can see, I am a big talker. I love to talk. Sometimes I have a big mouth. I talk too much, um, and, uh, and I know that there's plenty of people that I have come in contact with that love to talk even more than myself. Um, you know, being on this mission trip uh, last week, I got to realize just how much some people in our group love to talk, but it, you know, we had 18 hours to kill in a van, so it made the time go by faster, um, but sometimes it was putting me to sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, James here spoke about, uh, James talked about talking. He was writing here about talking. I want you guys to jump back to James 1.19, which says this, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, speaking is a, is a very great thing. Do not get me wrong. You know, obviously, I'm up here speaking, and we always have conversations, and we're even, we're even commanded to go out and to preach the gospel. We obviously need to talk. But what James is talking about here is the importance of being quick to listen and slow to speak. Because let me ask you a question. Have you ever put your foot in your mouth? Have you ever just said something that you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that? I've done that plenty of times. I've been married to the most beautiful and, and awesome woman, uh, Hannah Lucas, because Hannah Clausen's dead. Um, I've been married to her for almost three years now. Um, and I, I got to say, one of my biggest things that I have to work on with her is listening. I, I don't listen very well, but from our conversations with other couples, that's apparently a big thing with husbands, is we don't like to listen. Um, well, it's maybe not that we don't like to listen. We just 
It's hard for us to listen because we always want to try to fix it. We always want to do it our way. We always just want to go, 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 go. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, right. I, I'll get on that. But here's the thing. If I don't listen to Hannah, I'm obviously going to be in the doghouse, right? That's, that's the big, big thing. You, know, you don't want to be in the doghouse with your wife because it's hard to get out. But here's the thing, if I don't listen to God, I'm not going to go to the doghouse. There's a possibility that I can go to the hell house. We don't want that. I don't want that. And then, of course, the, the next thing to, to take note here is that in James uh, 1.19, he says, slow to speak and slow to become angry. How many of you get angry? I do. I had a frustrating time uh, when, uh, when we were on the mission trip and we were driving through Texas and we were trying to get to our, uh, get to our, uh, our hotel room before driving back home and, uh, <laughs> and Laurel played uh, navigator for me and she didn't let me read the map. Um, she was giving me the directions and it worked out great <laughs> until... Um, until um, so as I was saying, um, and then Laurel, um, so we were in a five lane, uh, five lane, um, highway and Laurel said, uh, okay, Josh, here's your exit. And, and I was like, okay. So I turned to get off on the exit, but then she says midway through, no, wait, no, this isn't your exit. So I stopped and I tried to get back onto the freeway. She's like, wait, no, it is your exit. And I'm like, okay. So then I go back and she's like, wait, no, it's not your exit. And I literally just stop like in the middle of the intersection. And thankfully, by the grace of God, there was no one that was coming our way. Um, and I finally said, Laurel, where do we go? This is your exit. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So I obviously got a little frustrated with that because, you know, we're in, you know, I come from a place where that is a normal thing. We're in five five lane freeways, even six lane freeways, and that's a very dangerous place to not know where you're going, especially when you're trying to stop and go, stop and go. But we got through it, uh, and it was actually kind of a funny story. Um, but the thing about it was that I was not being slow to speaking. I wasn't being slow to anger. I was being quick to, to, to speaking. I was being quick to being frustrated. I wasn't giving Laurel the opportunity to compose herself and to actually give me the right directions. So with that, I have had to repent. I had to ask God for forgiveness. And He has, um, as from what Scripture said. But anger does not come from God. We, we have no reason to be angry, to have malice in our heart and hate in our heart. From James 1.20 tells us this, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So we are slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God wants us to do. Now we can have passion, we can have passion just like Jesus had in the temple, but we cannot have malice and anger and hate come into our heart we can't do that because then that brings out, that brings out uh, sin. And we don't want that. So are you a hearer or are you a doer? Verse 22 says this, Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So are you a hearer? Do you just hear the Word? Or are you a doer? And you actually do the Word. What James is telling us here in, uh, in verse 22, it says, Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. If you do not do, if you do not act, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself trying to make it look cool. Trying to make it look good. Children of God want to do the will of God. And they want to read God's Word. They want to do God's Word. And I have to ask, if you do not do the Word of God, if you're not a doer, if you're just a hearer, do you truly love God? 
You want to go out and do it. Now, granted, I, I'm going to say this. We are not saved by our works. That is not what I'm saying. But here's what is the key to, to, to this whole idea of doing. James 2.17 tells us this. In, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. There has to be some type of action when we are saved. There has to be some type of form of doing. God did not create us to just sit still. He gave us two legs. He gave us two arms. He gave us a voice to speak. Um, now granted, there are some who do not have those things, but we are still able to communicate the gospel. We are still able to do things even when we feel like we're physically disabled. There is some way that we can still do the Word of God. There has to be action if we are saved. Verses 23 and 24 says this, Anyone who listens to the Word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So when you look into the mirror and you walk away, do you forget what you look like? No, of course not. That's crazy. Of course you always remember what you look like or at least some form of you know, facial feature. Some of you might think to yourself, wow, I really aged or or like wow there's gray hair there i mean that's with me i'm like wow i got a lot wider like i i used to be so so thin and now i'm bleh. um so that's something i need to work on but when we leave the mirror we don't forget what we look like the same goes for us in our daily lives with jesus we need to mirror christ think about this for a minute so Sunday worship, we're all here on Sunday worship, we're worshiping the Lord, we're reading His Word, uh, we're, 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 just, we're, we're, we're doing all these great things for the Lord, right? But then when you leave, when you leave church, when you leave this building, when you leave this body of believers, are you no longer a Christian? Of course not. You're just as much as a Christian here than you are out there out of these doors. So when you come here, you're looking in the mirror and you're mirroring Christ, right? You're, you're reading His Word. You're worshiping Him. You're doing what He's commanded you. But now that you walk away from the mirror, you're walking away from, from, from church, from this building, from worship, you need to still keep that reflection. That reflection needs to go with you everywhere that you go. And if you're out every, every night or even so often, you're out partying all the time, getting, getting drunk or, 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 or cursing your neighbor, spreading gossip, uh, showing hate, uh, practicing some type of sexual immorality, lying, blaspheming, meaning taking the Lord's name in vain by saying like things like OMG, but actually saying oh my G-O-D, or saying G-D, taking uh, the Lord's name, using the Lord's name as a swear word, anything that cursing Curses the name of our Lord and Savior. That is blasphemy. And it's very serious. It's a very serious offense. OMG is a very serious thing. So if you're doing all these things, if you're making a practice of sinning, are you deceiving yourself? Why are you doing these things? If you are a true believer in Christ, why are you practicing these things? Where is the action? Where is the repentance? We are image bearers of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do. We need to have action. We need to do, church. It is not just on Sunday. It's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And here's the, here's the thing about deceiving yourselves. If I'm up here preaching to you and I'm, and I'm up here looking all great and, and religious and Christian, yeah, 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 I'm on fire for the Lord and I'm doing all these great things, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I go home and in secret behind closed doors, if I'm not being that image bearer of Jesus Christ, if I'm not showing that reflection each and every day everywhere that I go, you know what that makes me? A Pharisee. The Pharisees were exactly like that. 
They hated Jesus. So think about this. If you are willing and practicing all these things, you are a willing practicer of sin with no remorse and no repentance. Do you hate Christ? Because if you love Jesus, then why are you making this practice? Now, I'm not saying that if you sin, you know, you're, you're a terrible person, or if you sin, you're a Pharisee. That's not what I'm saying, because we, we are sinners saved by faith. But we need to have repentance. Repentance means the change of mind and the change of heart. Which means when we sin, we, meet, we need to feel so disgusted with ourselves that we need to run to Jesus and do the things that we need to do to make sure that we don't commit that same sin again. We need to do action, church. We can't just sit here on Sundays and just go through the motions and be like, well, okay, well, I know that Jesus forgives me anyway. There needs to be action. Show the action, church. Verse 25. And here's here's the amazing part of this this entire thing. So you're sitting here and you're going, well, what do I need to do? Or what's the point? What, 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 what is the point of all this? Verse 25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. This is the law that saves. This law right here saves and redeems us. It helps us in our walk. So why would you not want to do it? So I want to wrap up with what we talked about here today. So first, the first thing that we need to do is we need to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Quick to hear and slow to speak. Remember, it's always great to talk. It's always great to to have conversations with people But when we're reading His Word, when we're in conversations with people, and we're getting very frustrated, we we need to be quick to hear the Word and slow to speak. If we do that, we more than likely won't be so quick to get angry. Number two, mere Christ and not the world. The world wants you to to think, yeah, you can can do all these things. You can... can, uh, you know, you can get angry. It's okay to get angry. You can do this. You can, you know, you can do all these amazing things. But God's Word says differently. You need to mirror Christ and not the world. And three, do not hear and forget, but hear and act. So hear the Word, read the Word, and do it. Act on it. So if there's anyone here today that is not a believer in Jesus, if there's someone here today that is thinking to themselves, you know what? I, I just I've always thought that I can be a I've I've always thought that I could be a Christian, but I just don't know if I'm ready for this. I just don't know, you know I just don't know. I'm here to tell you that God exists. Jesus Christ came into this world as a as a living, breathing, bleeding human being, just like you and me. He lived the perfect and sinless life. He was convicted as an innocent human being. He was hung on a cross to die for our sins. And he resurrected on the third day. And he took all of this punishment, took all of, all of our sin and God's wrath upon himself because he loved us. And he loves us that much. But here's, what, here's the action that needs to happen. You need to turn away from your sin. You need to turn away from the ways of this world. And you need to put your faith, hope, and trust in Jesus fully. Jesus is the only one that can save. I beg of you, when we go into this time of prayer, that if you are not a Christian, there's no magical prayer that can save you. It's not through, it's not through anything magical that you can say or anything. All it takes is confessing your sin turning away from it, and confessing Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. That's all that it takes. You need to come to die. You need to come and lay down your life for Christ. Come 
and lay down your life for Christ and you will be blessed. Not by riches, not by a fancy car, not a big house, but by riches in heaven. You will live in eternity for all time with Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for this um, a beautiful message that you brought, Father. Thank you for your word on this day. Father, may you just continue to sanctify us and grow us, Father. And again, may you just be with Marcus as, uh, um, as whatever he is dealing with, Father. May you just bless him and help him to just be strengthened and, uh, and to come out of this okay. We love you and we thank you, Father. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I would like to invite... Um, uh, uh, some elders, our elders that we have here, uh, they're going to be leading us in communion on this Sunday. So I'll turn it over to you, gentlemen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, Sorry, I was distracted there. Mm -hmm. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance <clears throat> and of communion and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent of the Father into the world to assume our flesh and blood and to fill for us the obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross by His death, resurrection, and ascension. He established the new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never, ever be forsaken by Him. We come to have communion with this same Christ who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, He makes Himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us unto life eternal. In the cup of blessing, he comes to us as the vine in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come in hope, believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and a foretaste of the feast of love which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come. When we unve with unveiled face, we shall behold him, made like unto him in glory. Since by his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ has obtained for us the life-giving Spirit who unifies us all in one body. So we are to receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and to our joyful duty, to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator, Almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and the expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless 
may be to us the communion of the, of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attend, attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into the Lord Jesus Christ. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the same night he was betrayed, took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which has been broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. <laughs> 